great to see everybody here this morning. Um, I was thinking as we were watching the Trunk or Treat uh, video, which was awesome, uh, praise God for that, uh, the train keeps running. Um, we've decided a while ago, uh, really from the jump, that this is not our campus, it's God's campus. And so we want to steward it well and use it for uh, a blessing in people's lives and even to serve our community. And so I know Tuesday we'll be hosting two precincts here. I think there's an election coming up, I'm not sure. Uh, so get out and vote. If you don't vote here, go to yours. And uh, But uh, just a blessing to be able to use this place that God has given uh, to us to, to bless others. Speaking of, we're coming to the end of our giving series. And if you're here this morning as a guest and a, friend, a new friend from our uh, Trunk or Treat on Thursday night, we want to say a couple of things. I want to say personally a couple of things to you. One is welcome. We're so glad you're here. That's fantastic that you uh, came and joined us here this morning. I've already met at least one person who came to Trunk or Treat, and so I'm sure there are others uh, in this service, but so glad you're here. Also, I want you to know that We've been joyfully talking about giving. You might be saying, okay, pre I come to this church and preacher's got his hand out, right? That's not how it's been, and it's not how we intend for it to be. Uh, we are talking about this joyful, gracious blessing that God has given to us to give back to him. It says in Psalm, I think, 24.1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And so if you start from that vantage point and that starting point, that perspective shift, then really everything we have, everything we are, all that we have been given is a gift. And uh, I know that uh, Pastor Jay and Paul Hildebrand, one of our elders, spoke out of 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, uh, where it talks about we give to our, ourselves first to the Lord, and then they gave, those Corinthians gave to the work of the ministry to Paul and his companions, the Apostle Paul. So it's been a joy to talk about giving. I just want you to understand what we're talking about this morning and why we got here. And so today is the last Sunday of our giving series. And this morning we wanted to take a moment to just mark the moment and thank God for all of his blessings. He has just been kind of like goofy generous to us here at this church and has just poured out his blessings on this place. And most importantly, he's poured them out where it counts the most on an inside out basis. He's changed lives here. And so this morning, we're going to go through the backdrop of Psalm 115. Seven years ago, it was our 40th uh, anniversary as a church, and I was sort of racking my brain as to what to preach on, and a dear friend who uh, was here said, why not Psalm 115.1? And I knew the psalm, but I had gone dormant for me, and I looked it up, and it said this, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness, and I thought, that's the one. And that's the one for today. I've come back to that psalm. It, fortunately, it has not laid in dormant uh, those seven years. I've come back to Psalm 115 probably as much as any of the psalms that I've visited. And it has just been an encouragement to me. We're going to kind of pick apart this verse near the end of our sermon uh, where we're going to, I'm going to share with you some of the beautiful Hebrew structure of it that really brings it such rich texture. But until then, I just want to be sure that what we mark as our moment as we start this morning is it's not to us, O oh Lord, not to us, but to your name, give glory. And for the sake of your steadfast love and faithfulness, which is why in the end, I felt like I can't title this sermon anything other than glory to God for all he has given. Glory to God for all he has given. So with that in mind, let's go to him in prayer and then we'll get started. Father, thank you for all you've given. And at the top of the list is what we hear in John three sixteen. It says that you so loved the world that you gave your only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the ultimate gift. 
And everything after that is kind of like awesome gravy, icing on the cake. And you're, you're so generous and so robust in your, in your, in your giving that you've, you've given us everything. And so I pray, Father, that today as we contemplate that, we will do it through the joy of what we read earlier this morning out of Ephesians 2. We were dead in our trespasses. We were children of wrath. That was our identity and our destiny before you had something to do with it. But then it says, but you, God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which you loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, you made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. Praise to you, O Father. And so I pray that the joy of salvation will just fill our hearts, and I pray that you'll draw those who have not yet trusted you to trust you as Savior, to trust your son Jesus as their only Savior. And I pray that as we go through this marvelous psalm and we hear stories of how you've worked here locally, that our hearts will flood with praise. And so we commit all this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I kind of tipped my hand there at the last of my prayer to say that the way we're going to share our stories this morning is through the, the lens or the structure of Psalm 115. We're going to uh, do some summary statements of Psalm 115 first by, by way of introducing the stories, and then we'll come back to the psalm and see what God's Word has said to us uh, about these things. So the first is... The one real God has brought about real transformation in the lives of real people. Now, I would just tell you, in the work that I do, the number one fuel that gets put in my tank, the best of all, it's kind of like whatever super premium plus is that goes in my tank, it is to see God change lives. First and foremost, to see him take people who were dead in their sins and raise them to life in Christ. And then also from there to take them and grow them in Christ and to then go out for Christ and then to multiply disciples for Jesus Christ. What a joy it's been to see that repeat many times in my 18 and a half years here. And so that's the biggest fuel I get in the tank. And this morning, I wanted to share two stories with you from people among us. Uh, the first is a guy named Drew Patterson, and the second is from Shay Casey, our children's ministries director. And they tell stories of how God has brought transformation in either their lives and or the lives of others. And so take a listen to how God has been working. And one of the things that I've seen God do through this ministry is his ability to take lost, broken, and struggling individuals and bring them the peace, bring them the joy. Um, when I came, I, I mean, we all struggle with something. We all have different struggles, and they're not the same. But he was able to, to uh, bring that peace to me and show me through this program how to come back to him and pray to him and and look for him for guidance he's, he's promised us that he would heal us he will give us the strength um, I've, I've talked to plenty of the people that have been in regeneration before me people who are leading who are serving making coffee helping out with the video leading small groups and every one of them that I've spoken with have said the same thing. The joy that they see that these broken individuals, us, as we come together, that we are able to share how God's grace has lifted us up and relieved us from all these struggles, these hurts, these resentments, these sins. And it's just been a joy to actually see that. Um, I think I was told that last year 
if I was willing to serve as one of the co-leaders, that I would have a front row seat to seeing this healing process. And I kind of shrugged it and said, yeah, whatever. It's amazing to see how people change and how quickly they change. So I'm grateful that I was asked to be able to serve in this ministry, and I hope I can continue to serve forever. And going through this ministry, this regeneration ministry, the uh, Lord has taught me how to trust Him, how to put down all my hurts, my resentments, my fears, my angers, my anxieties, to put them at His feet, and He is willing to carry them for me. And not just me, but for everyone who is struggling. Uh, it, it, it's just been a blessing to go through this and learn how God has brought me closer to Him, how He's made my relationship with Him a priority in my life. Um, you know, everything that I do through my spiritual life, through my personal life, through my professional life, as long as I'm willing to let go of my will and not follow my will and give it to Him, He has blessed me and He continues to bless me and He will bless you too. I kind of like to end this up with a little praise to the Lord and ways that we can honor Him and serve Him. Um, there are so many talents that He bestows upon us. And while we don't all have the same talents, we all have talents that we can share. Um, in the past, I've been afraid to share some of my talents because I was afraid of what people might think of me or that I may not do it correctly. I may not be perfect at it. But one of the things the Lord has taught me and showed me throughout my years is I don't have to be perfect at sharing. And I think that is something that we can all take to heart and understand. We don't all have to get up and sing because I promise you, you don't want to hear me singing. We don't all have to run video cameras. We don't all have to do sound. We don't all have to teach Sunday school. But we do have talents and we do have things that we can do to serve the Lord. And by doing so, we grow His kingdom and we help each other. Hi, I'm Shay Casey. I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at FBC. And I just wanted to share with you a few great things that God has been doing in our ministry here. Um, one of the things that I'm enjoying the most right now is watching God transform the hearts of kids. I've gotten to have a front row seat to quite a few kids now who have taken that step to believe in Jesus as their Savior and then have really owned that decision by going forward in baptism. It's really been great to get to watch those kids even further their testimony by serving in their own classrooms and serving alongside their parents in the local church. Those transformations are really encouraging to me as a person, just knowing that God doesn't expect us to be fully grown or Bible experts or, you know, perfect mature people. He just wants us to know our own sin and to know His Son Jesus as our Savior. And that is a big thing to watch in the lives of these kids. As I've been working in kids ministry now for a few years, I have, um, I've seen God consistently show up in the form of faithful people here. There have been a lot of weeks where I've thought, wow, God, how, how are you going to make that work? And whether that was a lack of volunteers or um, a special project that needed done and we didn't have money for it, or, you know, just wanting to provide something different and new, He has shown up every time in the form of steady and faithful people here. He has showed up through faithful people who have given of their own time, their own families, their own money, their own giftings, and I've watched God really care deeply about all of the little things in this ministry, so how could I not trust Him with all of the big things too? So something I wanted to share that is a praise is praise God we are sharing the gospel with more and more kids each week. We have seen pretty steady growth, especially in our elementary age classrooms over the last several years. We're seeing around 70 kids on average every Sunday and getting to minister to them. They also have the biggest and best and most invested group of volunteers pouring into their lives each week. 
and we've got to watch them come to Christ. We've got to watch nine kids be baptized and celebrate with them. So that is just our biggest praise right now. Um, we also have a big praise that, um, as you've seen, we had a special donor give money and they didn't have a purpose for it set out, but we got to share that with the rest of the church in the form of a beautiful new lobby. That has helped us create a more welcoming space, not just for kids ministry, but for the whole church and for ABC Preschool and all of the people that set in set, set their foot inside our door any given week. So that's been a huge praise too. It has been a huge praise. Yeah, let's, I heard a clap. Let's, let's praise God. You know, even we might be tempted to even minimize the, the physical blessings he's given us, like those, that place in the East Lobby where people walk in, hundreds of people walk in. And, and it's, that's just Sunday morning. We have hundreds more walking in every day of the week uh, through all the things that God has brought people here for at this campus. And it's just really transformed from a place that was less connective and less uh, aesthetically inviting to some place that's really a connection point and a place of warm fellowship and connection. And God can, can kind of stir the pot in those situations and really works um, to connect people and, and then bring them closer to him. And on Thursday night, I was here for Trunk or Treat, and I got to see firsthand how much of a blessing the in-the-know monitors are throughout the campus, directing people and, and making it just a very easy, seamless uh, track of, of blessing and ministry for that evening. So uh, praise God. Uh, God has worked in the hearts of people uh, to give what he's given them, and um, then we put it into stewarded use here. So praise God for that. So I mentioned that uh, we were going to continue to tell good stories. The next is the trustworthy God has been and continues to be our help and our protection. And this next one is is got a personal meaning to me for sure, and I know to every one of my teammates on staff. Uh, we have a team here that comes on Saturday mornings of women, uh, probably plus or minus, it's, it's ranged from a half dozen to a dozen uh, through the years. And they come basically rain or shine on Saturday mornings, and they pray for us as a staff team and for this church. And I've told them, as I've shared prayer requests through the years, um, what a blessing that is, and their faithfulness. Nobody, hard, many of you don't even know that in ministry exists, and they don't come with a billboard advertising how great they are as prayers. They just come and pray faithfully. And I know personally that God has answered some of the prayers that they've been so fervent in praying about for my own family's life and in my own life. I know the same is true for my teammates. And I've also said, and there's no way to measure this, but I know there are untold numbers of things God has prevented from happening because of their prayers. Things that we would pray wouldn't happen. And God in his mercy and his grace has, has preserved us and, and protected us. And I wanna be clear about this issue of help and protection. It is God who is our help. And it is God who is our protection. We are not our own protection. We are not our own help. It, it is God ultimately who helps us and who protects us. And he has been and he continues to be that. And so thank you to my dear sisters who are prayer watch warriors. Um, your ministry is a huge blessing personally. And I know it's been a huge blessing for this church. And then the next phrase that we uh, summarized from Psalm 115 is the God who remembers those who fear him blesses them. And just continuing in a, in a, in a, in a small personal way, uh, that's where God has me in school right now is to teach me to fear him more and more and more. When the word fear here has a deep sense of reverence and awe, uh, and I think a byproduct of it is trust because I've been prone to not want to trust the Lord a lot lately. And the psalmist reminds us, the God who remembers those who fear him blesses them. Let me tell you how he has blessed this campus and this ministry and this church, his church here on this campus. 
as I mentioned, se I, seven years ago, we, we had a celebration Sunday for 40 years. Well, today, we've, we're into our 47th year. Isn't that awesome? That's what God has done. That's what God has done. I know uh, Pastor, uh, Doug Jackson and Jeannie Jackson over here, uh, Doug's still an elder here at our church, and they were part of the original group of families that met together in a living room, believing that God was leading them in some path. And here we are 47 years later. Isn't that amazing? That's only something God does. That's what God does. If you were to walk out these center doors and just take an immediate U-turn and look at the wall on my left, you're going to see a mission board. And it's filled with smiling faces of workers and partners from this church. We have had a basic principle in our missions team here at the church that we're going to prioritize those who have actually been kind of born and bred and raised here in this church and who have been sent out from this church. And so a, a significant majority through the years and even to this day are people who are from this place ultimately. We heard one last week, Haney, um, who was here. And so just a blessing that they are going out and doing the same thing that we're called to do here, which is to proclaim the good news, uh, to equip and build up the body of Christ, and to see them multiply and do the same. And then the, I think a series on giving would be incomplete if I didn't say this blessing. Uh, we're debt free, and that's awesome. Um, when I got here 18 and a half years ago, uh, we were carrying a little bit of debt. I say a little bit, I mean, it was a number. <laughs> and um, I came from a financial background before that, and I know that debt basically drives the bus in organizations. And so the elders, thankfully, and this was part of what attracted me to this place, is they had said, you know, you're going to be minding the, the shop on that front. And so every nickel and every dime that is not needed for the uh, run rate operations of this church, we want you to put toward the debt. And God solved that debt problem within a year. It's incredible. Just incredible. And I can assure you that I, my calculations far underperformed his. My projections were like, you know, this is what man can do. And he said, no, 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 no. This is what I do. Here's what I do. Incredible. Incredible. And our charge, I think, from this passage is we must continue to fear the Lord. We must continue to revere him, to stand in awe of our great God who is so personal that he sees us and takes mind of us here. And he provides and he guides. And then that's a great segue into the last stanza of the psalm. The summary statement is the God who is over all gives us the joy of stewardship and worship and hence the series that we uh, hatched five weeks ago, this giving. The God who has given us all gives us the joy of stewarding him, stewarding what he has given us and worshiping him in our giving. So let's go back through the psalm now and see exactly how the psalmist uh, presented each one of these stanzas. The first stanza after verse 1, which says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and faithfulness. And then it breaks into verse 2. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Now this was written to the God's chosen people, Israel. And so the nations are all the nations other than Israel. And the psalmist is saying, why should those nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. I, I love that phrase. He does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk, and they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them, so do all those who trust in them. 
Now, the classic image we have of an idol is something that's fashioned like a little statue or something, which probably was in the psalmist's mind in this writing. So think about that picture. You fashion it here on earth with the stuff of earth. And so those who make these become like them. We're drawn, if you will, downward and degraded to the worship of something that's inanimate, can't speak, can't touch, can't feel, can't smell, can't see. And yet, those who make them become like them, so do all who trust in them. The same is true for our pick an idol of the day. Whatever it is that we worship and revere in the place of God, we become like that. I can tell you from my own life, when I've sunken into idolatry, in my own life, it degrades and spirals downward. And I become like the very thing that I'm worshiping. And it's a, it's a no, it's a, there's, it's a dead end game. And so the one, those who make them become like them. But when we worship the transcendent God, the, the, the holy God, the, the God who created the men and women who are fashioning the idols and all the stuff that they are using to make them, when we elevate to that when he draws us to himself we become more and more like him we don't become god but it says that our predestination as followers of jesus as christian people is to be conformed to the image of jesus so when we worship the lord with all that we have because of all he's given to us we become more like he is we walk in his path we respond in the ways that he has told us to respond, and we've seen as an example in his son, Jesus. And then the next stanza, the trustworthy God has been and continues to be our help and protection. And again, let me emphasize, it's him who's helping and protecting. It's not our own strength. And he continues to talk to the nation where he says, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. He narrows a bit to the spiritual leaders of the nation. O house of Aaron, who was a priest, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And then he broadens it back out. Those you who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And so I would put us in the, these were God-fearers, people who weren't Jewish by ancestry, but they were seeing God as, as Israel was always supposed to be, as the one who would be blessed to be a blessing, to behave in God's way and walk in his way so that people would be attracted to their God, the one true God, instead of these handcrafted idols. And so we who fear the Lord, even in this day, Keep trusting in him because we know he is our help and he is our shield. Then next, the God who remembers those who fear him blesses them. The God who fears, who remembers those who fear him blesses them. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and and the great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. So before first service, I was hanging out on the first row, and I won't say who I was talking to, but I said, how are you doing? And this person said, great, or good, at least good, maybe said great. I can't remember for sure. How are you doing? She said back to me. I said, okay. It's like, oh, okay, okay. And then I stopped myself for a second and I realized, and I said, okay, because circumstances, right? There's things going on, they're hard, they're uncertain. Can anybody, you know, join me in that? You understand what I'm talking about? And what, what I told you God's got me in school on is to fear him and trust him. And so he reminded me in that moment, I was like, I have so much to be thankful for. And at the top of my list is he saved me. My goodness gracious, he saved me. I have eternal life in Jesus. It's all downhill sledding from there, right? 
And that's the perspective he calls us to, is to remember my blessing. Remember that you have security in me. You can trust me. If I, he who did not spare his own son, it says in Romans 8, how will he not then also freely give us all things? That's who our God is. We can trust him, but he calls us to just fear him, to revere him, to look at him with the awe that he deserves and say, you are the help. You are the protector. You are the provider. And then he closes with the last stanza, the God who is over all gives us the joy of stewardship and worship. And it closes like this, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down into silence. So he's sort of parameter setting here. Psalm 24 is still true. The, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. You have to have it and possess it and it be yours in order to give it to somebody else to steward, right? That's what he says here. The earth he has given to the children of man. And then he says, your domain isn't over the dead. I'm in charge of life and death. And so I take verse 18 to be as long as we have breath here on this earth, in this time, existential moment at this time and place, Bless the Lord, praise him. And not only from this time forth, but this is where that perspective kicks in. He saves us and we will be with him forevermore. So we'll get to bless him and praise him and worship him forevermore. And so how could the Psalm end any other way than to say, praise the Lord, right? Which brings us back, as I promised, to Psalm 115.1. And the Hebrew language in which this psalm was written is beautiful in the way that it's structured. It brings out a richness that we don't always get in the, in the English translations. And, um, and Pastor Jay was helpful the other day in one of our team meetings. He, it struck him. He's like, this verse is a gold mine. And he kind of shared with us. And some of these thoughts were things that he pointed us in. The, the not to us, O Lord, not to us is a miniature little chiasm. And a chiasm is where it takes the thoughts on either side of things on, and it moves in until it creates a focal point. And the little miniature focal point is not to us, not to us. Who's the focal point? O Lord. The star of the show, the subject of the psalm is the Lord. And then there's a modification or a modifier of why, why, to your name give glory. So he gets the glory. And then this second phrase is sort of like a couplet. It, it sort of is two very related truths for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Do you guys remember that Old Testament phrase, steadfast love? Have you heard it before? I hope you might say in the Ruth series. We examined what that Hebrew word means in the Ruth series that we just finished a several weeks ago, and it's hesed. Hesed. You don't have to be a, a scholar to say that word. You can take it in your pocket and say, I know Hebrew. Hesed. And it's probably the best Hebrew word you could know because it means, it's, it, it defies being categorized as a single word. It's so rich. It means goodness, faithfulness, mercy, favor. If you were to try and make it into one word, people have sort of transliterated it as loving kindness. And I had said, and I just, all I did was lift my slide out of the Ruth series and stick it here today. I, I called it perhaps a close cousin of God's grace. So, that's, that's where we have to come back to at the end of this psalm anyway. Everything we have is because of God's grace, 100% of it. Everything I've shared with you today, that Drew shared with you, that Shay shared with you, it's all 100% of God's grace. Every bit of it. We're going to close here in a moment with a song that um, I've been humming for the last several weeks. And so I just sort of begged everybody to, to play it today. And we're going to play it. And as my dad, who used to lead worship, used to say, clear your pipes, get them ready, kind of thing. You know, sing it like we mean it, if we do. <laughs> and, and just let her go. 
and it's called Thank You, Jesus, for the Blood. And, and I want to come back and use the lyrics of this song to make an appeal to you if you have not trusted Jesus as your Savior. Listen to these words. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time, I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious life. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting and life has no end, for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. There is nothing stronger there than the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood, that calls us sons and daughters who are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you've saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious life. Sing it like we mean it, right? And... Let me say this. If you have not trusted Jesus as your Savior, this song, these lyrics put it perfectly for us. We were lost. We were a wretch. We were dead in our sins like Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says, like John read for us earlier today. But God, you bridged the chasm. You saved my life. I want to appeal to you today if you haven't trusted Jesus as your Savior. That's the most important thing I have said and will say today. Run to Jesus as your Savior. Don't trust and take your chances on anything or anyone less than him. It will not save you. They will not save you. You can't save yourself. But God has applied his, the, he gave us his son and Jesus applied his blood, as the song says, and washed us white from the dark stain of sin and gave us life. Run to Jesus today. So let's, um, let me say this in closing before we uh, look at the connection card and the next steps. Glory to God for all he has given And he often does this in and through you. The ultimate gift he gave was his son, Jesus. But if he saved you, he ransomed you, he's given you new life. He is transforming your life. And so when you give for things like we talked about here today, he's done it in and through you. He gave that way. And so keep going in what he leads you to do. Let's take our connection cards and uh, fill these out together. If you are not familiar with our connection cards, they are exactly what they're titled. It's a chance for us to connect together, and so that's why they're for everybody. The Body of Christ is not some dues-paying organization or some kind of subscribing membership. It's an organic, spiritually organic, real live body of Christ. And so... We want to stay connected in that way. And so let us know you're, you're here and how you want us to do your part. Like Drew said, uh, find your place here in the ministry at FBC. And then on the back, if you have trusted Jesus as your Savior today or if you are still interested in knowing more about how to do that, then check that box that says begin a relationship with God. And we would be delighted to engage with you. But let's take a look at these next steps. First, in response to the first phrase, one real God has brought about real transformation in the lives of real people. Turn to Jesus in faith and trust him to transform your life. It may be that you need to turn to him to save you today. It may be that you need to turn to him um, for something that's going on in your life. But Trust him only as the one who can transform things. Next, the trustworthy God has been, can, has been and continues to be our help and protection. 
surrender control and trust God for your help and protection. I told you God's working in my life. Uh, you know, I like, I, I, I don't know what those exercises are where you squeeze that thing to, to strengthen your grip. But sadly, I strengthen my grip all the time and I grip around the things I'm trying to control. And he's prying my fingers apart. And he's saying, why don't you give it to me? It was never yours to control in the first place. And who are you going to trust? Yourself, your other circumstances, or me for your help and protection? I wish it were something I had to do once a quarter because I was so good at trusting him and surrendering control. I mentioned in first service, and I think I undershot, I need to do it about 50 times a day. So maybe today you just need to say, Lord, I surrender control. What's your flavor? What are you holding on to? I've learned that when you hold on to things, they, become, they can become life-dominating things. So what do you need to let go of and turn over to him for your help and your protection? Third, the God who remembers those who fear him blesses them. Adjust your life where necessary to fear God. Revere him, trust him, recognize that he is in control. And then finally, the God who is overall gives us the joy of stewardship and worship. Now, if you're here new to us, if you came from Trunk or Treat, whatever, I'm really not talking to you right now, per se, about financial giving. Uh, we're just super glad you're here. But what I said last week, uh, quoting out of Corinthians was, if we've sown spiritual seed in your life, then is it too much to expect to reap spiritual harvest from it? It's, it's, it's basically that if this is your home church, you've seen the stories, they keep going, uh, give. And there's ways you can do that. And they're in the lobby, in these, the back of this room, in the boxes, online. The guys are going to come forward with baskets to, to receive the offering, or you can do it electronically. And so be like the Corinthians, in the, the, the folks in Corinthians, where he says, you gave yourselves first to the Lord and then to us. Praise God. So let's fill these out together. My thanks to the Lord. I, I thank him for you all. So I praise him for this place and, and for the people he's brought here. I love you. God bless you.